In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to apply a simple product license to an access file so that on first launch, the user must activate the application to a specific computer. As a quick overview of this process, we're going to be taking some VBA code that comes with the Office Protect product and copying and pasting it into our access file to prepare it. And a an additional in addition to that file, which is installed by your installer, there's two additional files that must be installed onto the customer's computer. And these are shown here. There's the quick license, runtime, executable, and a ticket file that defines the license. Let's review the setup process in quick license to set up the simple product license. First, from the setup screen, we put a path to where we want the ticket file to be generated. So we've selected our shared license folder. And we've already created this uh, simple license. And let's review what we've set up here. So in the product column, we have the name of the license, which in this case is Access Product. And it'll create a ticket file called accessproduct.ticket. We have a version number and a security code. If we look at the details of that, by clicking on this first column, it brings up a license dialog where we can name the record. We set uh, master ticket of new records, never timeout, allow same computer reactivation, show runtime errors, and show activation error reason. The only other option we need to set is activation required, machine calculated. At that point, we're ready to go ahead and button to generate the ticket file, which we've already done. The next step is to put the VBA code that comes from Office Protect into our access file. So we've opened up into Notepad and make sure word wrapping is not selected. So we're going to take a copy of this access file and let's paste it into this folder and go ahead and open it. So we've opened this into Access. We're going to go to the VBA panel. And we're going to be pasting in that code into the uh, first form that comes up, which is this form here. So we've opened up. and We see there's some existing code, so we have to leave that existing code and just paste in the additional code here. Slide in this file. So we're going to select from the top, just scroll all the way down until this form open event. And we'll copy that code. And we're going to paste that. We have already have an option explicit in our code here, so we'll just replace that right there and paste it. Then we're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to paste that last subroutine right here at the very bottom. Okay, so that's the code has been pasted in. There's a couple of changes we need to make to this code to link it to our specific license. On this line of code, we specify the location of the shared folder or the shared license folder where the ticket file and the quick license rt.exe file will be located. And that folder with its two files must be installed by your installer. Uh, we have different options here. Just put it in a location that would be the same on every computer. So for this example, we're just going to put it directly into a folder called Access API Shared License. The only other line of code that we need to modify within this VBA is on this validate function call, 
we have to give the name of our license, which was shown in the product column of the main quick license window, the version number, which was shown in that main window as well, and security code, which was shown in that window we previously looked at. So our access, our, our VBA code is now complete. We can go ahead and save. Uh, we'll probably also want to password protect VBA code so it's not viewable by the user. And to do that, we can bring up the uh, properties dialog. and apply, apply a password uh, after locking the project from viewing. So we'll go ahead and apply a password here so that the user cannot view or modify our VBA code. So now we can go ahead and save out our access file. Before we demonstrate the customer activation process, let's ensure that VBA is enabled within access. Most access projects already have a lot of VBA code, so the, the uh, access product wouldn't be of any use without enabling VBA. But in the unlikely event that yours doesn't use VBA, you're going to have to essentially have it disabled until a line or two of VBA runs to enable something so that it's useful. Otherwise, it's possible that the customer would try to launch your application without enabling VBA. So we're just going to go to the options dialog and the trust center. And within the trust center, we're just going to make sure that macros are enabled. And then we'll go ahead and close out of access. Now let's launch an activator application. So on first launch, an activation dialog is presented. If it's a serial number activation process, the customer received a serial number during the purchase process, they'll just enter the serial number, click activate now, and they're activated. For this uh, video, we're using a manual activation process. So the customer provides the request number shown in the dialog to you, the vendor, and within Quick License, you generate the activation code they need. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, we're running both the end user's uh, stuff and the uh, quick license on the same computer here. But you'll get the idea. So we're just going to go to the activation panel and we're going to enter the request number, click activation. We'll get the activation code and then close out of quick license. So we're back on the user's computer where the user enters the activation code you give them and they're now activated and the application is running. And each launch thereafter, uh, the application just immediately runs after it validates that that computer has been activated. Let's review the process. We started by defining a license within Quick License and generating a ticket file. We placed that ticket file and the Quick License runtime into a folder that gets installed on the customer's computer along with the, our access file in, into which we've pasted some VBA code and modified it a couple lines to identify that folder and bind it to a, that specific ticket file. We then demonstrated the user experience by launching and activating the application. Finally, as a developer, one additional bit of information you may want to be aware of is when your application is launched and activated on the customer's computer, it will automatically generate a folder at this location, C slash user slash public slash ticket. That's called the shared ticket folder location. And it will have your ticket file stored in there. That's the active copy of your ticket file. On this particular computer, we have also activated Quick License, so it has a ticket file for Quick License itself because we're on the development machine. But on your customer computer, this folder is automatically created with this, with this ticket file in there. That's the active ticket file. The only reason you really need to be aware of this is if you wanted to force that activation dialog to be presented again and your 
license does allow reactivation, then you could delete that file so the next time you launch your application, the activation dialog will be presented again.